And so here it is Friday, and I'm Doug, and this is Brandy, and this is Pray First. Pray First, and we do this every morning, Monday through Friday at 7 a.m., a 15 or 20 minute conversation <laughs> about the Lord, about <laughs> the Bible. I laugh because we went almost 30 minutes yesterday. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Ever since Brandy's been with me, they've gone a little long. Uh-uh, it's not my fault. I, I never blamed you. It is just a true statement. Everybody get in here. We want you to hashtag live, hashtag shared. Good morning, Charles. Good morning, Bonnie, Raymond, Ben, Karen, Danielle, Judy, um, and other names that I just can't see right now because I can't go over there and just scroll What's up, guys? It's good to see you guys. Be sure to share this out. It's also interactive. Uh, maybe you saw this pop up in your news feed. Maybe you saw this. Your name was tagged. Did you know that you can tag people's names in here and they can see this and it shows up on their feed? So let us know how you heard about Pray First this morning. Uh, just put a little simple thing over in the comments. Um, if you're driving, obviously don't do that. Uh, but let us know how you found out about us. Before I get started uh, too far into this, I want to tell you about an exciting opportunity if you are local to the Olive Branch DeSoto County area. Um, I'm, I can't remember the date of it. Coming in January, there's going to be the very first Pray First Fellowship. Pray First oh. Fellowship. Do you know the date on that? Oh, it's coming. Um... If you're part of Cross Point Church in the Olive Branch or Hernando area, uh, you can find this information at our Cross Point family page. But um, a family in our church is putting together the very first PFF 700. It's Pray First Family. And uh, they're going to be getting together and discussing the topics that we talk about here at Pray First. So I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, so right now, if you would, let's, in, let's um, welcome our new folks. Hit some hearts, hit some likes, and just start tearing those things up. It's going to be January the 6th from 5 until 7 p.m. January the 6th from 5 to 7. If you want more information about our very first Pray First Family Fellowship. Uh, well, I'm not putting their name out oh, here. okay. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was being very intentional about that. But if you heard Sorry. that, you know, go to your Pray First Family. But let me say this. No matter what city and no matter what country you are in the world, you can start your very own Pray First Fellowship. PFF and start a small group discussion about what we talk about in here every morning. And guys, the Lord will speak to you, speak through you, and the Lord will speak to and through those who come to the fellowship. And uh, wow, it might be an awesome thing for you to think about or consider in 2019. So no matter where you live, you can do something like that. Okay, so we've been talking about hearing God. We want to jump right into that. Uh, we've talked about be careful what you hear. Be careful what you hear. Because when you ask to hear, you might hear what the Lord is saying, but you also can hear, you know, what yourself is saying or what the enemy is trying to say to you. So Mark chapter 4, verses 24 and 25 says, be careful what you hear. It also says in Luke, be careful how you hear. Be careful how you hear. And we talked about those two things in the previous two days. Today, we're going to talk about heed what you hear. Hashtag heed. Hashtag H-E-E-D, heed, heed what you hear. In other words, you can hear something and not pay attention to it. You can hear something and not take action. So Jesus says, you know, be careful what you hear, be careful how you hear, and take heed to what you hear. I'm going to read Mark chapter 4, verses 24 and 25, and then we'll get right in. Jesus said to them, take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use it, it will be measured back to you. And to you who hear, more will be given. For whoever has, to him more will be given. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away. And yesterday we read in Luke, I'm not going to go back and read that again, that we need to be careful how we hear. And then he says, with the same measure you use, it will be measured back to you. He says, if you do not use it, you will lose what you even think or you seem, I believe is the word that Luke used, seem to have. Take heed to what you hear. Take action. Do something about it. Brandy, how important is it that when you hear God, you respond? It's very important if, to do it. It's, it's, I really feel like in my own personal life, it's been like small little things that you need to do, you know, um, 
don't laugh and you probably will ladies especially but we go in there and we know that we you know want to look our best feel better about ourselves and so we want to purchase certain types of things it might be makeup or whatever i'm a mascara person i love mascara. me too my eyelashes <laughs> and, really are accentuated um but i you know even just hearing little things like i remember distinctly hearing don't buy the cheaper one even though you know the other one is the one that you always buy it's just a few dollars more just get the one that you always want because you're going to come back because you're not going to like the one that the cheaper one and you're going to have to spend more money buying the one that you should have just gotten to begin with. <laughs> so laugh all you want to. I know that sounds really ridiculous, but for me, it was a building effect because I heard it exactly. I know that that was not me. Just get the one you're supposed to get, Brandy. That's the one you want. It's only a few dollars more. You're going to end up spending way more because you're going to have to come back and buy that one anyway. So it's little things like that that have built up to knowing and tuning into the, to God's voice so that I could do. So other what things. you're saying. So, for, so the men who have no <laughs> idea what you're talking about, um, since, you know, most of us don't wear mascara. I think the point is that if you don't take heed, if you don't respond to what God's saying, it's going to cost you in the long run. Yeah, I mean, it will cost you. That that case was a financial thing, and I was trying to be good stewards with the money that I had, but that doesn't always mean just buy the cheapest thing. Absolutely. Hashtag mascara gospel. Uh, that's going to be... <laughs> That's going to be a new oh, book by my Jesus. wife, Brandy Bell, The Mascara <laughs> Gospel for Ladies Around the World to Understand oh. to Heed the Voice of the Lord. So anyway. let's take a look at Jonah. <laughs> Jonah, it, God it was, to you it in was, ways that he'll speak to me in There's ways. no <laughs> doubt that God used his mascara to talk because that's how I met you. Oh, he likes the mascara. I like the eyes. mascara. That's my favorite. <laughs> The mascara. Is that anything like, uh, what was it yesterday? The, the peace. The peace. So yes, hashtag the peace. And today, hashtag the mascara that you can get from the wherever you get the your mascara. mascara. The mascara. Okay, so seriously, I have, okay. We have Jonah, Jonah chapter level. one. Jonah chapter one, verses one through three. Let's look at. <laughs> the price that's paid when you don't heed or take action to the voice of the Lord. Jonah chapter one, verse one. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the spoken word came to Jonah, the son of Amittai saying, arise and go to Nineveh, that great city and cry out against it for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah, everybody hashtag, but Jonah. Okay. So God, spoke clearly to Jonah, but rather than heeding or listening to, Jonah made a different decision. But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish. And if you look at the map, it is in the opposite direction that God told him to go. When you hear God speak, be careful what you hear, how you hear it, and how you heed it, okay? How you pay attention to it, how you follow it. Jonah went in the opposite direction from the presence, listen to this, from the presence of the Lord. It says when he did not heed the voice of the Lord and he went in the opposite direction, when he didn't follow the word of God, when he didn't do what God asked him to do, he went the opposite direction and he left the presence of the Lord. I want you to listen to that. When he didn't follow, when he didn't heed, when he didn't listen to, he didn't pay attention to, he didn't take action to the word of the Lord, he left the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare there and went down into it. I want you to notice that ever since he turned and went the opposite direction that God told him to go, he's been going down. He went down to Joppa. He went down in the ship. Pretty soon he's going to go down into the water. Then he's going to go down into the belly of the whale, or they called it Sheol. It was like Sheol. So anytime you turn from the direction of God and go a different direction, you will begin to go down, but not you're going down because you're leaving the presence of the Lord. Now understand this. God will never leave you nor forsake you. I want you to write that out. God will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. God will never turn against you and not love you. 
But let me tell you something. There's more than one presence of the Lord. There is the omnipresence of God. That is, his presence is everywhere. There is his inner presence where the Holy Spirit comes and lives inside of followers of Jesus Christ. And there is the manifest presence of the Lord. You can absolutely walk away from the manifest presence of the Lord. And that's when you notice in your life that God is not doing in your life what only God can do. Mm. And you feel detached. You feel like, you know, you can't do it and God's not doing it and he's kind of distant to you. Have you ever felt like, I want you to answer this question, have you ever felt like God was distant to you? Yes. Well, let me clarify. God has never been distant to you, but you have been distant to God. God didn't leave the presence of Jonah. Jonah left the presence of the Lord. When you do not obey the word of the Lord, you will leave the presence of the Lord. God initially spoke to Jonah with his voice. But when Jonah didn't heed his voice, God took control of Jonah's circumstances. Let me say this again. God initially spoke with his voice to Jonah. But when Jonah didn't heed his voice, God took control of his circumstances. Have any of you ever had a time where... God took control of your circumstances. Brandy, <laughs> you ever felt like you didn't listen to God, you went a different direction, and you just went down, 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 down? Gosh, you kind of put me on the spot. I'm sure there's been plenty of times because I'm kind of... Kind of what? <laughs> just to be real honest, I'm I'm hard-headed. I've already said that before, and sometimes that... that that turns into hard hearted, you know, it's like, I'm, but I don't want to do that, you know? And Jonah was even like that, right. You know, right here, he didn't want to go do what. Why God do you not want to go to, 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 to uh, Nineveh? Cause they were wicked and they he didn't wicked. like them. He, he didn't, didn't like them. They like weren't them. like him. They were ungodly. Yep. They were, he did not want, he did not want to go and bless them. He did not want to go and do. What, what was the blessing? I mean, he was just going to talk to them. What was, what was he afraid of? Them, wasn't he afraid like they were going to be blessed by God? He was afraid that they were going to repent. He was afraid that they were not going to get punished for what they'd been That's doing. Right. Yeah. He was afraid that if he went down there and they repented, God would relent and God would let them back and everything. And, you know, a lot of us in the church have that same mentality. We don't want to, we don't want the, we don't want the sinners to repent. We want people to get what they've got. We coming want them to, them. to get what they've got coming yeah. to them. We also want people to know there's a difference in them and us. We're we're hooty tooty, and they're fresh and fruity. I guess I don't know. I didn't couldn't come up with a good rhyme for that. <laughs> but we 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 we're selfish with the gospel. So he didn't listen to God. He didn't love his neighbor. He didn't love those who were unlike him. He didn't love. Uh, let's say, let's say some, you know, whatever sins is your pet sin that you despise. I mean, you keep your sin, you know, well petted and provided for, but other people have, you know, the bad sins and you want to make sure that they get what's coming to them. So Jonah gets this word to go preach the gospel because they will repent. Jonah goes the other way. Jonah didn't heed the voice of God. So Jonah took, I mean, God took control of Jonah's circumstances. Now, here we go. How many of you would like to hear God more? Hit some hashtags, yep, yeps, uh, hit some thumbs, hit some hearts. How many of you have thought, I would like to hear God more? Let me ask you another question. How many of you have felt like you used to hear God, but you don't hear God now? How many of you feel like he's in a quiet season, and you've maybe even said, God's not speaking right now? You know, I want you to consider that it might not be God that is not speaking. It might be you who are not hearing. I want to say this again because when Jonah left the presence of the Lord, God didn't speak to him again until Jonah repented. Jonah began to hear God through his circumstances. Maybe you need to look around yourself and ask, is this unusual? Does this many things happen in a row? <laughs> Does everything I do go down, 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 down? then maybe, just maybe, it's not that God's not speaking. Maybe it's that I can't hear him like I used to. If you ever get to a place where you can't hear God, this is just something to consider. It's not the only reason. It's not the only reason, but it's, it's a major reason. If you get to a place where you can't hear God, maybe it's because you didn't listen to the last thing he told you. Maybe you ignored it. 
Maybe you went the opposite direction. Maybe you left his manifest presence. And when you've done that, the only way to hear more clearly again, the only way to hear him again is to respond to what he told you last time. Hmm. So if you are in a dry season or you're in a place where you can't hear right now, I want you to go back to the place that you last heard him and do what he told you to do. You thought, oh, no, plenty of time has passed. I'm not going to have to do that. I don't want to do that. God, well, no, you're going to do that or you're going to be affected by it. Jonah did not hear God again until he repented. And God also began to close his circumstances. Where Brandy's head? Close his circumstances in <laughs> around Jonah so that Jonah would listen to him and not be hard headed. Not be hard headed. Uh, that's what God was doing. So if you ever feel your circumstances closing in around you, maybe go back to the last place you ignored God. Hashtag ignored God. Have you ever ignored God? I know I've ignored God. Brandon, you ever ignored God? Gosh, yes. Take heed. Take action to what you hear. Because when you do, Mark and Luke tells us that more will be given to you. Mark and Luke also tells us when you ignore the voice of the Lord, even what you have, what you seem to have, will be taken away from you. How many of you guys have ever heard God and done what he told you to do? How many of you have ever heard God and ignored what he told you to do? I got a yep, yep on both of those. Yep. Brandy, a yep, yep on yours. I just want to give you a couple times, and Brandy, if you want to, can you remember a time when God told you something and you responded with a yes and did what he told you to do, and it made a difference? Any, any, you want to give any examples of that? Um. There was one, it was just, um, I mean, there's, there's been many times, but the one that comes to mind immediately was, um, do you remember that time that we were in, in Collierville and I had to go up there to, um, file for unemployment years ago. Mm -hmm. And I said, we have to stop at Kroger yep. and get some flowers. And you were like, why in the world do we have to stop and get flowers? I said, I don't know. I just have to go in there and get them and tack them to the lady. At the Filing for unemployment. <laughs> The Lord tells Brandy, let's go get some flowers. <laughs> go like get some red flowers. Red, fresh cut had flowers. To be red, fresh cut flowers. And I had to go in there and take them to the lady. There would be a lady in there. It was just so what clear. What a waste of money. Right? So, anyway, long story short, um, he's looking at me like I've lost my my mind. But he, I, I said, Doug, I have to do it. The Lord's telling me to do it. And so, go in, get the, the flowers, and then I go to the unemployment place and um give the lady the flowers and she the said, lady at the desk at the unemployment office yep and she says oh what are these for she don't know me she didn't know me at all i said they're not for me they're they're for the lord from the lord and come to find out this lady has tons <clears throat> of flowers in her yard she is known in that area for having like this beautification garden beautificate the beautification <laughs> It is early in the morning. I'm not doing very well speaking, maybe. Teasing You're me doing about. great. Okay. Anyway, so come to find out that is one of the, the greatest things you could possibly give her is flowers because she loves them. Come to find out I'm just being obedient, but something got hung up with my my paperwork or something that I had done a few later a few days later, and she calls me and says, um, something, something, something. Anyway, the timeline, I don't remember all the details, but I just know that she pushed it through. She was able to push something through and she was watching something for, you know, to make sure that it went through or whatever. It came up flagged. She remembered who I was because of all of that. So anyway, it's not always because you're going to get something or do, you know what I'm saying afterwards or whatever, but, um, the obedience allowed to favor on a for, to for his me. still small voice got your, finances push through because you went and blessed this lady out of your lack and God knows how to control that right. stuff. That was just super cool. That's just one example. He's done it many times, but that one always sticks out to me. A couple of, uh, really? that's huge. I mean, you're always talking about the small things of God. It's yes. also going to be written in the mascara gospel book <laughs> is the chapter on the small things of God. I but a couple of things that God has done that led up to something large this year is the Lord told me several years back to 
give away the weekend finances of Cross Point Church uh, to give away every penny, uh, every dime, every dollar, no matter what came in. God said, give it away, bless somebody, that we would be most like our Heavenly Father when we became givers. Now, understand that you can be a giver of time, money, efforts, talents, all these things. Matter of fact, you should be a giver of all of the above. Every resource that's been placed into the hand of a follower of Jesus should be there for a moment and then distributed uh, and given. So <clears throat> what we did with that first year and all the money that came in across Point Church, the Lord said, give it to organizations that are doing a fantastic job in your community that you couldn't do as good a job, but they've, they've done it already. So we gave to four organizations, wrote a pretty large check to each of those places. But one of those organizations in particular was the Breakthrough Center for Ladies uh, here in our town, local town of Olive Branch. And what we didn't know then was how God was going to use that gift that we sown into that ministry to actually adopt um, that ministry as part of our own and that the Breakthrough Center ladies would start coming to be a part of our church. We had no idea that that was going to happen. And <laughs> That's pretty amazing. We love the ladies at Breakthrough Center. We really do. And so these ladies come to our church, and they come thinking they're Breakthrough Center ladies, I think, a lot of times, and wondering probably how they're going to be received, all these different things. But what you don't know is the moment they walk into Cross Point, they become Cross Point ladies. Yeah. And many, 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 many of them have become followers of Jesus Christ in our, in our services and baptized, and now they're leading ministries in our church. These are daughters of God. These are princesses. Uh, who are coming in that, and, and, and we we wouldn't know these ladies, we wouldn't know these people had God not shown us to uh, plant th that seed into organizations that were doing a great job, and Breakthrough Center does a great job. The next year, he told us to give money into people's hands so they could go and bless people in the community. So we put like, I don't know, $14,000, $13,000 of cash into the people's hands and told them to go give it away at gas stations, give it away at grocery stores, do all these things. And the Lord worked majorly in those areas uh, to speak to people. I asked the folks to go and ask God, who am I supposed to give this to? And then inside that was another envelope so they could go give finances to somebody else. So it was really an exponential growing thing. Then the third year, the Lord said, guys, I want you to feed the hungry. Cross point, I want you to feed the hungry, but don't make a plate and ask the people to come to you. Buy groceries and take the groceries to them. And the Lord allowed us to feed 350 families, just listening, taking heed, and doing what the Lord said. And, a, a, you know, a couple of hundred of our own church members got to go and distribute that over, you know, 350 homes in less than two hours. We delivered groceries uh, to them. And this year, the Lord said, take that money and I want you to provide goods and services to people in their communities. Don't ask them to come to you. You go to them. And so we launched the Destiny Center. I want to give you one more. I was sitting in St. Francis Hospital in 2006. And I asked the Lord as Brandy was in the back getting an epidural to birth our first son. I asked the Praise Lord, God. what can I do for my boys? My boy, what can I do? What am I supposed to do every day? God, I've never been a daddy. What do I do? And he says, lay hands on them every day and pray for supernatural protection and supernatural health. I have three sons now, and every day of their lives, we lay hands on them, and we pray for supernatural protection and supernatural health. Be careful to take heed to what God says. Take heed what you hear, how you hear, and that you pay attention. Be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. Brandy, pray us out, and pray us out quickly. <laughs> okay. Father, thank you so much for today. Lord, we thank you for... It being Friday, Lord, I know that the people that are in the work week, Lord, you know, especially after Christmas and all that kind of stuff, the last thing they necessarily want to do is go back to work after spending such good times um, celebrating your birthday and just giving and receiving and all that good stuff, Lord. So help them finish their work week um, with success and let yes. it not be overwhelming to them, God. Let them be able to rest, find some time to rest, Lord. And Father, just speak to them. Let it be remove all of the the um fog lord the the cloudiness lord the the um 
interference yes. is the word I was looking for. The interference, Lord, that happens sometimes and tries to thwart, um, you know, what, what God is saying to us, God, and help us to um, just do without even thinking, God. Just we hear and then immediately yes. just do, Lord, yes, because Lord. Um, just like you told Doug years ago, Lord, delayed obedience is disobedience. is disobedience, Lord. And so forgive us for where we haven't, Lord. And Lord, help us to consider the cost of following you. And that may mean being ah, without, you know, without the things that we think that we need, Lord, but you are the, the, the provider of everything. Yes. All our needs according to your riches and glory, God. So Lord, just help us to hear you, help us to be obedient and help us to see how, how you're in your, using us to find your people your missing children lord and to bless those lord we love you thank you so much in jesus name amen 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 all god's amen. people said amen let's do the father amen story of my jesus amen amen amen, amen. all right hashtag <laughs> Hey, hashtag amen. Elvis, I can sing some amen hashtag amen <laughs> hashtag live hashtag recorded uh please share this guys this is criminal time share the criminal time i love y'all we love y'all have a great week we'll see you later and have a great weekend bye <laughs> gosh